because we know when your power and your masses have taken control in our lives. In this Sunday, as we dedicate ourselves to you, O oh God, we shall become usable of you, King in glory. We shall be used, nobles of noble youth, King in glory. You shall make us whole again, Jehovah. You shall restore us again, dear Lord. May you let your power come down. May you let your mercies prevail, that all may be well with us. Be with us in this service through to the end. Because we believe and we are waiting upon you. Everything that we shall do, Jehovah, in this service. Lord, may it become a raving sacrifice acceptable before thee for your own glory. This is our humble prayer. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the church says, may we give the Lord a celebration because of his faithfulness. As we stand, the Lord be with you. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I was glad when they said to me, Praise the Lord. Let us all uh, be seated. I will do the summary of the law. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first and great commandment is this, He always loved the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. In that uh, spirit, we are going to do the, uh, the prayer for purity, option one. Uh, prayer for purity, option one. Almighty God, you bring to right things hidden in darkness and know the shadows of our hearts. Grant us and renew us by your spirit that we may walk in the light and glorify your name through Jesus Christ. Let us all be upstanding. Priest choir, lead us in the glory. Glory to the Son, glory to the Spirit forever three in one. Glory to the Son, glory to the Spirit forever three in one. In glory finding, in glory finding, in glory Glorify, glorify. Glorify, glorify, in heaven. Glory to the Father, glory to the Son, glory to the Spirit forever. Amen. As we stand, we join in the collect for the day, which is the fourth Sunday before Lent. Collect for the day, fourth Sunday before Lent. Together, Father, in the name of Jesus, we are not able without the continuous supply of your abundant grace to lead lives that glorify you. We are overwhelmed by your power, might, and love. Do not hide your face from us when we seek you for health and for the forgiveness of sins and for guidance in our service to you. Amen. We are going to sit so that we hear the epistle followed by the gospel. This all comes from First Peter, chapter 5, 
and we shall read verses 1 to 11. First Peter, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Let us read together. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder, a witness of Christ's suffering, and one also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not greedy for money, but eager to serve, not rolling it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Young men, in the same way, be submissive to those who are older. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility towards one another, because God opposes the proud, but, for, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be of self-control and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Yende mbere ichiriyo yende be yende mbere ichiriya Kristo e yende mbere ichiriyo yende mbere yende mbere ichiriya bona mbere we stand to hear the good news of our salvation as it is written to the gospel according to St Luke chapter 5 beginning to lead from verse 1. Luke chapter 5, beginning to lead from verse 1. One day, as Jesus was studying by the lake of Gennesaret, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish they had taken. And so were, the, and so were John, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So they put their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. And this is the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise to Christ our Savior. Uh, we thank the Lord that we have with us the Reverend Anne Maura, the Assistant Provost, S.E.K. St. James Cathedral in Kiambu, who is bringing us the word of God. And to welcome her to share with us the word of God 
We are going to sing, Lord, I need you. Karibu sana mchunganji. God, we honor you and we thank you for this great opportunity you've given us today that you may hear from you. We thank you, God, for your presence. And we pray that, God, because you brought us with a reason to hear your word, speak to all of us with a voice that all of us can hear and use me as a vessel of honor, God, for your glory. And these are prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Good morning. Praise the Lord. As our provost has mentioned, my name is Anne Ndutamwaora, and by the grace of God, I'm serving in St. James Cathedral, Kiambu, and I'm sincerely grateful to God for this opportunity. Our provost, thank you so very much for honoring our diocese and our cathedral and inviting us that we may come and share together the word of God. I'm delighted and as well humbled as I speak and share the word of God before the great men and women of God who serve you every other time. And just because of their humility, as our provost is, they give me this opportunity to stand here while they are sitting there for clergy together with our provost. I am sincerely grateful. I wish to bring so many greetings from my family my husband and our two children who are home because one is in boarding school, and the fraternity of St. James Cathedral, our provost, the clergy, the leaders, and a few people who knew that I was coming. Do you receive them? Yes, I thank God once again for being here. One thing that excites me when the provost uh, told me I'll come on his behalf, Kanan Mungai, and he shared with your provost, our provost Ndwati, on the theme, and he told me that today is a day that we are going to bless or anoint our tools of work. I shared with both of, of our provosts that I'm excited for what God is doing in a spiritual realm because this month in our diocese, our theme is from Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. And we are doing practical ministry in the area of our profession. And therefore, when Provost tells me and calls me and gives me the readings, I had a task 
to try and jungle with our theme, the Cathedral of St. Andrews and the theme of St. James, and they may come together as we celebrate together and hear what God wants us to hear concerning work. And therefore, God is the author of work. Indeed, in the beginning we read, he did all the creation, he did everything until the day he created man, the sixth day, and he rested. And therefore, us as human beings, we are co-workers together with God. And God told the man, when he put him in the Garden of Eden, to go and subdue land. And therefore, the first, the first assignment that God gave to man was work. And therefore, in my understanding, in the simplicity, is that life is all about work. And therefore, we've got to work to be like God, who showed us what to do. And what excited me with the theme that the provost uh, of this cathedral and the team that is leading this church, that we are advancing to our life's destiny. We are advancing. And advancing is moving towards our destiny. And destiny is our life's purposes. Remember I've mentioned, God gave man the first, the first assignment to go work and subdue. And therefore, what God has put in our hands to do is our assignment, our purpose, and our destiny. And this is where the Lord is leading us to, that we may pursue our destinies and our purposes. Allow me to kindly mention a bit of, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 10. The Bible says that whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. That which God has given you to do, you embrace. Not the evil, but the good. And in this essence, I wish to bring our professionals, our professionalism, where God has put us to serve and to work. And he's charging us to do that with all our might. Allow me just to mention whatever, because the Bible says whatever, that particular thing God has given you, that particular profession God has given you, that hand, and hand suggests ability. Whatever your hand finds are opportunities because not all of us who went to school got the opportunity to get a profession or to get to a profession. And therefore, when God gives you that thing to do, it is an opportunity he has given you. And our might is the intensity of our heart and soul towards accomplishing what God has given us. And the verse of focus this day was from Proverbs chapter 11, verse 10 and verse 11. This became very interesting to me. The book of course, the Proverbs and Ecclesiastes were written, according to many theologians, by a great and the wisest king who ever lived in the history of Israel, and that is King Solomon. And you see, he says in verse 10 of chapter 11 of Proverbs, that when the righteous prosper, the city rejoices. And then how does a righteous man prosper until he works diligently to the cause that God has given him? And you can imagine the Bible says, when we prosper, the city rejoices. 
Therefore, when you prosper in your profession, there is jubilation in the city. And not just the city. The city is just a figure or a symbol to show where you are. Because when you prosper, your family rejoices. When you prosper, the church of Jesus Christ grows and there is jubilation. And when you prosper, even the economy of our nation, of course, grows. And that is why they say, when the righteous man prosper, there is indeed joy. But how would we prosper until, like what the Ecclesiastes we are told, to do it with diligence, to do it with all our might. God has given us the opportunity to be doctors, to be nurses, to be a teacher. And I was telling the church elders yesterday morning in our meeting we had, how I love teachers. I once taught as an, as an untrained teacher. And I asked him, what would you tell of a teacher in a public school? Allow me to use a public school. Who is in, the, in class at 6.30 a.m. Whereas the classes start at 8. And this same teacher leaves the office at 6 p.m. And the question is, was she doing her job or was she doing her work? Because our work is our purpose, but our job is what we do for pay. And if I'm doing something for pay, I just get to my office at 8 and leave it at 5. Of course, I will be paid. But when I'm doing the work, the purpose God has put me in this land to do, I go extra miles. I also asked him, what would you tell of the policemen and women when there is traffic and it's raining so much? And you know how unruly Kenyans we are. We always want to overlap and be there. And by the end of the day, we waste more time than we could have wasted because of our selfishness. And this guy comes just trying to control sober men and women who have decided to bring havoc on the road. And it's raining. And this guy is begging you, Tafadali Mama, Siu Songa Ivi. Was this person doing their jobs? The job is tell stop and go. And to check whether you're obeying the traffic laws. But these people go extra miles. But many times we do not recognize or see what these people who seem to be so lowly, they do on our behalf. I applaud them because I've come to realize they don't just do their jobs. Indeed, they do their work. And the Lord is calling us as St. Andrew's fraternity and all of us that we may realize the purposes that God gave to us when we were made because all of us were created for a particular assignment to accomplish. The question is, are we ready to give our all to accomplish? There are very many examples in the Bible of men and women who went their way so that they can advance their purpose. Look at a person like Esther, a very humble girl who gets to the palace and the uncle warns her, tells her, be very careful. Get out of your comfort zone because you will think you're so comfortable in the palace when the Jews will be getting rough out there, when they'll be persecuted, don't think you'll be spared. And many of us get to our offices and God moves us to particular assignments and we get comfortable. And God, and, and you know, Mordecai charged and challenged Esther. And this girl took the risk and went the extra mile. And she accomplished the purpose of delivering the people of Israel 
from destruction that which Haman had planned. Would you do the same to your people when you realize there is danger where God has placed you? In your families, our families, do we go extra miles for our families? Look at a person like Nehemiah. He realizes, he was also in the palace, amazingly, a cupbearer. Very humble people. And I wonder why God uses the humble people. Because he always gets people from out of nowhere and makes them people and makes them uh, respectable people. And he makes them powerful. And not just powerful, he makes them influential. And even today, God is doing the same. And therefore, if you go to a place of your comfort zone because you got a good job and you're failing to do as God assigned you to do, let me tell you something. God is preparing others in the wilderness who will come and take over you because God is faithful. And therefore, we've got to arm ourselves and realize I have been, I'm in that office because of, of accomplishing what God wants me to do. And Nehemiah realizes the walls of Jerusalem are broken. And he goes to the king. And you know when you're diligent, when you're faithful, God makes all things to work together for his glory. And when he goes to the king, he finds favor with the king. And the king allows him to go and rebuild the wall. And he does that. Despite the destruction of Zabaz and Sanballat. Because they'll always come. But those should not deter you. One time when I was a very young girl, I worked in a public office as a cleaner. In that office, I had just cleared high school. I didn't know much. That is when I learned in the public offices, there are extra receipts that resemble the official receipts. And the people whom were working in the office, people would come, and instead of the person writing the receipt that is official to a particular person, you know very well, they wrote in their receipts. For what reason? For their own benefit. It is very unfortunate because I still follow the place because it's in my village. Those, most of those people died. But I want to ask us today, when we are in places that are corrupted, we are, when we are in places that people have been socialized to embrace evil, to kill for survival, to kill for their own gains, can you stand firm and say, I know why I came here and my assignment is to represent Christ and Christ crucified. And therefore it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter the distractions. It doesn't matter the hatred. It doesn't matter what you're going to do to me. One thing I know, I've got to accomplish my purpose. And these were exactly what Jeremiah and Nehemiah did. Sanballat came, and there came a time when they were building with a sword on one hand and the mortar on the other. Because the kingdom of God, since the time of John the Baptist, suffers violence, and only the violence who are ready to get it by force are able to accomplish their assignments and their purposes. And therefore, as we advance, people of God this morning, are you willing to resolve to align in the assignment that God has put you to? And this took me to our gospel reading this morning. A story that we know. Jesus go to the shore of Lake Gennesaret. He finds Peter. Actually, it's the, first, the calling of the first disciples. He finds them. And because our theme of the man is 
to go to our destiny or to advance to our destiny through leadership. Jesus finds them. He gets into Simon's boat. He shares the gospel. Then he tells Peter, move to the deeper shore. Kiswahili likuwa inasema asubui, weka mashua yako kwenye kilindini. And Peter brings the argument like we always do. I am a professional in fishing. Of course he was. That was the task he was doing. We have been here through the night. How comes now you tell us to go to the deep waters? Jesus didn't know how to fish. And therefore Peter asking Jesus and telling Jesus, we have been here all night. We have been accustomed. Indeed, these things we know. We know how it goes. We can even predict. We can tell the movement of the water and tell whether they are fish or not. But finally, by Christ's command, this is leadership. He moves. And when they move, they catch a lot of fish almost to turn or to tear their nets. Leadership. Obedient. He listens. Despite the argument, he listens. After listening, he obeys. And after obeying, he moves towards and when he moves, the reward is there. And this morning, in our profession, in our lives, where are we? Where we have been experiencing dryness and barrenness, unproductive. We are not becoming productive because of remaining there for long and being accustomed. I've been a parent to a very disobedient person. And we don't see anything good coming from this person. What is Jesus telling us today? If we could move deeper, there is greater things ahead of us. In our professional, could we venture? I love what First Peter says, huh? That what God has kept for us, our eyes have never seen. And people have never heard. And many times we have been stagnant because of being accustomed and being socialized. Like Peter was saying, I have been a fisherman for quite some time. My friend, there are great things ahead of you which you've never seen, which you've never heard. All you need to do is obey the leading of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you will be amazed of what God will do for you as Peter and the team was amazed. Won't you give yourself to the Lord and purpose to move to your destiny? Indeed, you have an assignment. That assignment, work for it diligently with all your heart, with all your might. God knows why he put you there. And as I come to close, what could you imagine? One of the great writers says, the greatest resource, the greatest brains, the greatest of abilities, the greatest of wisdom is where? In the grave. Because people were blessed. People were given opportunities. People were given the brains. But they failed to embrace the opportunities. And failed to pursue their destinies. Because we are living today. The fraternity of St. James. We are not going to be cowed or be stagnant. We are going to persist and, and, and resolve to get and grab this opportunity and do it 
with all our might. And when we shall prosper, there shall be joy in the city. There shall be jubilation in our homes. There will be jubilation in the church of Jesus Christ. And there will be jubilation in our nation to the glory of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As we meditate upon the word that we have heard, we all stand together with Christians through the centuries and through the world today to affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified at a point as Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection. Let us pray as we sit. May the bishops and leaders of our churches have wisdom and speak in one voice. May the leaders of our country rule with righteousness. Amen, Lord have mercy. May justice be our shield and defender. Amen, Lord have mercy. May the country have peace and the people be blessed. Amen, Lord, have mercy. May the flocks and the herds prosper and the fish abound in our lakes. Amen, Lord, have mercy. May the fields be fertile and the harvest plentiful. Amen, Lord, have mercy. May we and our enemies turn towards peace. Amen, Lord, have mercy. May the love of the Father touch the lonely, the bereaved, and the suffering. May the path of the world be swept of all dangers. Hallelujah, the Lord of mercy is with us. Let's appreciate the Lord for the far he has brought us. As we welcome our provost for the notices. Uh, good morning. You know, when we hear the word of God, and after we have praised God the way we have done, then everything, everything else is part of the worship. Everything else is part of the worship. Turn to your neighbor, tell him it is good having you with us. Uh, we thank the Lord. I start with a thank you, uh, not a card, but something good that we can put in our office, but it's a thank you uh, from uh, uh, the family of uh, Mike Como there, uh, saying thank you. Your concern and affection touched me truly. You touched them when you stood with them when they lost their loved one. Having said that, uh, any visitors worshiping with us today who are worshiping with us, yes, be upstanding. If this is your first time, let's appreciate him. Uh, any other? Yes, another one. Let's keep appreciating. Ah, we have another one at the center. We appreciate. Yeah, keep standing. Keep standing as we appreciate. Yes, uh, yeah, we have more up there. Do we have, uh, yeah, we have even up there. Let's appreciate all of them. We always say St. Andrew's Cathedral is a home of worship, and you can make it yours if you are in Vika to stay. Consider making it yours also. 
However, if you are visiting, kindly take our, take our greetings when you go. And please stay standing until somebody comes your way. Our ushers are on their way to see you. Uh, on the other announcement, I want to start by noting that coming Sunday will be a special one. Can you tell your neighbor next Sunday is a special one? Yes, why? It's because it's a Sunday bordering Valentine. Valentine will be on 14th. It's a Monday. And so we are bringing it back uh, to Sunday so that we empower you. We empower ourselves. And so our Kiswahiri service will be just like it is, it is, 7 to 8. You the service, and this time you and teens will be combined, they will have it from 8 uh, to 9.15 or to 9.30. From 10, we will have three stations. We will have the church here, we will have the tent church, and we will have Bishop Jogona grounds. Bishop Jogona grounds, with the tent that will be mounted there, we will, be, we will have the youth. All our youth combined, they will be there. They will have uh, their preacher there, Rogers Monene, will be speaking to them, matters Valentine, matters love, matters relationship, matters of God and people. And then at the tent church, we shall have all the single moms, all the Annas, all the uh, Miriams, they will be at the tent church. Remember, all services will start at 10. And then here, we shall have couples, husbands and wives. Couples will be here. Now, mind you, we will not micromanage anyone. Where you go is where you belong, according to your own persuasion. So that is, I hope, uh, Rafta Mwambie, hope you understood that. <laughs> Remember, it will be a church service, but a special one. It will be a special service, but a special one. The single moms and the Annas and the Miriams, they will have Liz and Gota with them. That will be the facilitator. Here, we will have Peter Wandele speaking to the couples. At the end of the day, as a cathedral, we want to empower you, to empower ourselves, where it comes to the love of God, where it comes to love uh, with one another. I think I'm clear. The service starts promptly at 10. Your tithes, your offer it will be done where you will be. Hapa tumeelewana? Aya, sasa niwa naweza nikaendelea na mambo mengine. We continue to hold our elections, and uh, I believe you are praying for us. So far, so good. We have done Kemadi, UTI, Kiboko, Town, and Ofofa Ziwani. And so, on 10th, Thursday, coming, we will be at Pilot, MKU, Runda, uh, YMCA, uh, Thursday, 10th. And then, Makongeni, Bishop Gedega, on Friday, the 11th. And then next week, we will have Starehe, TUDC, uh, and Biafra. And the other Sunday, uh, the other week, you, uh, Outreach and Manjengo. Let's keep praying that we may be given the, light, the right le leaders. Viongozi wa naofa. Remember, leadership, church leadership is about service. It's not about big, being big. It's not bossy. It's not gaining in anything much, but it has a lot to do with God and his blessings. Uh, Manjengo fellowship members after service, see your uh, chairman uh, so that you continue to organize yourselves. Uh, uh, 
I'm, uh, I'm jumping some issues I don't want to. Uh, blessing of tools of work is today. Again, listen to this. Today as we anoint, and the people in the Bible who were anointed, they were anointed those who were sick for healing. They were anointed whom God appointed kings and priests. They were uh, uh, tools of work were anointed, swords were anointed when people were going for war. Anointing happened in different ways. Why do we anoint today? We anoint so that if you are unwell, or even by faith you have somebody who is unwell, that oil we put on your hand works the miracle of healing. Amen? We anoint you and your tools of work so that if your business or your endeavors are not doing as well, the Lord may come, you partner, and something new happens, things going to go okay. Remember in the anointing, we start with you. Because you are the first tool that matters to God. Before even we got your tools, you are God's tool. Very important. Can you tell your neighbor you are God's tool? Now, in that connection, ukikuja hapa vile tutaongozwa na our ushers, you do two things. One, as you come, you come with your, uh, with your offer tolly when that time comes. That offer tolly you have purpose to give today, you come with it that time. Now, when you come here, we will put a drop of oil on your palm on the palm of your hand. When we put it with this finger, put it, first of all, anoint yourself. You anoint who? You are God's, uh, you are God's item or you are God's uh, tool for work. So when you anoint yourself, then you also use the same finger from the same drop of oil to anoint your tool. Whatever tool you have, if it is a pen, anoint it. If it is a phone, anoint it. Whatever you have, anoint it. I know there are people who come with stuff that cannot be brought in here and they are out there. If you are in such a state, just lie us with the people's word. And Mr. Mwadi, where are you? Mr. Mwadi, please. Oh, Mr. Mwadi. Uh, I want you to the front because there they can't see you. Come, come through this, the stairs here. Now, those who are up there can see Mr. Mwadi. If you need anointing of something that could not be brought in here, uh, then uh, Mr. M Elias with Mr. Mwadi, I can add you some oil to take and uh, put on that. At the center there is okay. Yeah, at least now there is okay. Thank you very much. That is the people's word, and let's appreciate him. Asante sana. So anybody who might need extra, then we will see Mr. Mwadi. I hope you hand that as the ushers guide you here, the offertory baskets will be there. You come drop your offertory, then come and kneel. Where as the ushers guide us. I think I will not say beyond that, but remember today, we are pouring that anointing oil on your palm. You are anointing yourself first, and then you anoint uh, your other items. On Sunday coming, we shall uh, do departmental elections. That is for the youth, and for the teens, and for Kama, and partly for Sunday school. About the details, we'll be able to give them, but that will be after the service uh, after this, the special service that will happen at the tent, at, at the teens, tent church, at the field, and in here. So the youth and the Sunday school and the Kama, all those groups, they, will, they know we'll be doing that. The mothers, we are not doing elections now until August. I think uh, I've said almost everything, but uh, just to note that diocesan mentorship program, if you'd want your son to go through that passage through the diocese, 
It will be happening from 15th of March to 26th at CITC. Changes are 80,000, and uh, the details will be on the notice board out there so that uh, you can uh, use it. On a sad note, we have lost uh, a member, Helen Wamboi, of uh, Helen Waidera of Pirot. Uh, the, the portrait is there. Uh, and uh, today at 5, we are going for prayers. You can use that number for Anwanjiko to send your support. Let us pray for that family. And if you are available at 5, let us meet there. The ladies to be enrolled, you meet the leadership of the Mother's Union on Wednesday at 4. Wednesday at 4, ladies. Mamboyote atakua namnaile. Members of worship. Center for our children. You are meeting after this service at St. John's. Members of worship, the worship center or the complex that we build for our children, we are meeting at St. John's after this service. And finally, we welcome the Reverend Lea back to uh, ourselves. Congratulations. Uh, Reverend Lea is a mother of a bouncing baby boy. She's back. And so let's appreciate her back, Asante Sana. I think having said that, we are still in worship. I want to invite the choir so that they come and make their presentation, after which we have a restoration to communion, as uh, the Reverend Catherine will guide us. Let's appreciate our choir as they come. Yeah, we can do better than that, Asante. Praise the Lord, Church. The song that you are just about to uh, present is talking about bringing your vessels or our vessels to God so that he may be able to anoint them and also to use them. And above all, uh, that our hearts, as we continue pleading to God, that he may hear our cry, that he may hear uh, what you have in terms of uh, his work as we have been ministered to. And as we do that, glory and honor shall be unto us. God bless you as you listen to the music. Like 
the cruise of oil and failing is his praise forevermore and his love unchanging still. And according to his promise with the Holy Ghost apart, he will every vessel fill. He will fill your heart to overflow because the Lord commanded you bring your vessels now of you. He will fill your God is faithful always and remains so to his love God's hand. He'll be there forevermore. On and trust and look to him and give your heart and son to him. Commanded you, bring your vessels, not a few. He will fill your heart to overflowing with the Holy Ghost. Bless us, Lord, and bless the one that we engage in every day. We are praying from our that we are using every day, that our lives may always flow. He will fill your heart to overflowing as the Lord commanded you, bring your blessings not a few. He will fill your heart to overflowing with the Holy Ghost and He will fill your heart to overflow. Thank you very much, our choir. Asante sana. Thank you. Now we have four people we are restoring to communion. Uh, Reverend Catherine, can you name them out? As that happens, uh, Kaidre prepare those of us who came ready with their tithes and thanksgiving. Prepare as we do that. We are coming next to it. Thank you, Provost. We request Diana Nyaga from Makongeni Prayer Cell, Grandes Dweki from Bishop. Lucy Jerry from Starehe and Margaret Mongai from Outreach. Let me ask you in tongues. So what is critical when one wants to be restored to Holy Communion is self-examination. Self-examination. And I believe these ones have done it. They have worked with the, our clergy. And ours is to pray for them and to restore them. Please uh, be needing. God, our Father, we thank you for these, your daughters. The desire to be restored to communion so that they can be partakers of your blessings in the Holy Communion and in readiness to partake in your heavenly kingdom. O oh God, we pray that they may be acceptable before you. May the self-examination that they have done upon their, themselves uh, or upon themselves as individuals be meaningful to you. 
And so, God, as we do the restoration, may you do the inner transformation, the inner enabling, the inner strengthening. And you make them, O oh God, happy as they partake communion with us. For this is our humble prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so because of your uh, testimony and because of going through the classes, I, the provost of this cathedral, on behalf of the Bishop Julius, I restore you back to communion. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Let's appreciate them even as they go and sit. Uh, they will come when, they are, uh, when we are taking communion. Now I invite those of us who came prepared with their tithes and thanksgiving to come over so that we pray and continue. What shall I render to Jehovah? For he has done so very much for me. What shall I render to Jehovah? For he has done so very much for me. Nara, nara, nara. Heavenly Father, you are our God and we worship you. We thank you for this, your servants who have come to worship you through their gifts of tithes and thanksgiving, O oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have given them different assignments from where gone they get their monies. And Father, after giving them these monies, they have separated a 10% to bring into your house. We thank you for the obedience. We thank you for your, for your faithfulness, dear Lord, in tithing and in thanksgiving. Gracious God, we want to commit each one of them unto your very, very humble hands. So that God Almighty, your promises to those who worship you this way, May follow each one of them, God Almighty. May follow those people that they love, their spouses, their children, their family members, and their friends. God Almighty, that all of them may be blessed because of what these your servants have done. Now, God, we thank you for their businesses. We thank you for their farms, and we thank you for their jobs. We ask for your divine favor, eternal God, that Lord Jesus, they may find favor with your bosses who have employed them and even with those that they have employed. We pray, gracious God, that they may be promoted in their offices, that the God Almighty, you may enlarge them in their businesses and that their crops, their cows and goats, they may all increase to the glory and honor of your name. Now, Lord Jesus, receive these monies that they have brought to you. Sanctify them, God, and send them out to be used for the extension of your kingdom. Here in St. Andrew's Cathedral and even beyond. And dear Lord, whatever they have been left with, may you multiply it a hundredfold. For this is our prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Neke ge kohe we tehova ne maria mo de wana jekera neke ge kohe we tehova ne maria mo de wana jekera. Do
as we prepare for communion. Hear the words of charity and comfort our Savior Christ says to all who follow him. Come to me, all you who are tired of carrying your heavy load, and I will give you rest. So all of you who repent of your sins, who love your neighbors, and intend to lead a new way, a new life following the way of Jesus, come with the faith and take this holy sacrament to strengthen you. Let us reverently confess our sins to Almighty God. Mighty God, whose steadfast love is as great as the heavens are high above, remove your sins from you as far as the east is from the west, strengthen your life in his kingdom, and keep you upright to the last day. Through Jesus Christ, our merciful high priest. Amen. Thank you, Father, for forgiveness. We come to your table as your children, not presuming but assured, not trusting ourselves but your one. We hunger and ask for righteousness and ask for our heart satisfied with the body and the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. The portion of the people of God is peace. Please be upstanding. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. 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 Uh, our choir, uh, our praise and worship, a short chorus as we get ready for communion. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground. From through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are still, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand Christ alone, who to confess, fullness of God in hell, let's live the gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Almighty God, owner of all things, we thank you for giving up your son to die on the cross for us. We owe you everything. Why your refreshing spirit on us as we remember him in the way he commanded through these gifts of your creation. On the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We are brothers and sisters through his blood. Therefore, Heavenly Father, hear us as we celebrate this covenant with joy and await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He died in our place, making a full atonement for the sins of the whole world, the perfect sacrifice once and for all. You accepted his suffering by raising him from death and granting him great honor at your right hand on high. Brothers and sisters, this is the Feast of Victory. Let us be seated, and as our Savior taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. The cup of blessing which we bless. Draw near with faith and receive. Christ is alive forever. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you, keep your body and soul in eternal life. Take, eat, and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him by faith in your heart. With thanksgiving. Amen. Uh, we shall get ourselves ready and we'll be served in our respective areas. Aya karibuni. Yeah. 
be joining the post-communion uh, prayer, item 32. Together, Almighty God, eternal Father, we have sat at your feet, learned from your word, and eaten from your table. We give you thanks and praise for accepting us into your family. Send us out your blessing to live and to witness for you in the power of your spirit, through Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead. Amen. Let us pray for this anointing oil. God our Father, we pray for this anointing oil that as we put it on the palms of these your people, that it may work the miracle of healing in Jesus' name, that it may work the miracle of reviving their businesses in Jesus' name, that it may work the miracle of revitalizing their lives in Jesus' name, that it may work to see to it that all is well as they have desired from you. And so our Father and our God, as this your people receive it, may it be well with them, for we anoint them in the name of the Anointed One. And this is our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please be seated. Our ushers will guide us on how we come. Please come with your offertory because we are not going to uh, redo it again. When you come with your offertory, uh, bring it to the altar. Uh, when you kneel, our lay leaders will take that offertory uh, so that we don't uh, to suggest. But what we are going to do the leaders wata chukua hiyo, the clergy will come anointing you. Sasawa, kwa hivo, hautaweka pale, utaleta kwa altar, the leaders will be here with the, the baskets, so come, put your, uh, your offer to there, and then we shall do uh, the anointing. Whatever else you want to bring to the altar, that is uh, okay. So praise and worship, you can be doing a number as the first team or uh, the first lot are brought. And we are going to go very fast. Namamba yatakuwa mazuri. Que 
Yeah. 